감사합니다. Thank you very much. 예, 우리가 병이 들면 어, 의사도 또 가족도 우리 많이 도와줍니다. When we get ill and get sick, many of the physicians and our family members come to our support. 예, 그러나 어, 죽을 병이 걸리면 도울 자가 없어요. But if we are diagnosed with a terminal illness, there's nobody who can help us. 그 누구도 도울 수가 없는 겁니다. Nobody can provide their support for us at that time. 그러니까 어, 포기를 하게 되죠. And because nobody can come to our aid, that's why naturally people give up. 어, 누구나 한 번은 가는 거지만 어, 하나님이 나와 함께 하시는 그 힘을 가지고 가는 거하고 포기인 거하고는 다르죠. And everybody is destined to face death once in their lifetime, but it's a difference. It's different between when you just give up and when you really hold on to the fact that God is with you and you leave. 또, 걸리면, 어, and if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, there's nobody who can help you with that. 오늘 예수님께서 베세다에 도착했는데 맹인이 나타나서 살려달라고 기도하는 겁니다. Today we see that Jesus arrives in Bethsaida and he meets with a blind man who asks for his help. 예, 그 and because he's blind, he has a visual impairment, there's nobody who can help him. And the word Bethsaida means village of the fishermen. 그래, but despite all of that, there's nobody who can help this man. 원래 이름은 에, 모르겠습니다만은 로마 황제 부인은 이, 이름을 따서 어, 베세다라 그렇게 지었다고 합니다. And we don't know the original name of this village, but it actually took the name from the wife of a Roman emperor. 그렇다면 뭐 굉장히 이유 있는 지역이죠. Then that means that there is great significance to this region of Bethsaida. 또 여러분 아시다시피 베드로, 안드레, 빌립 이 사람의 고향입니다. And this is also the hometown of Peter, Andrew, and Philip. And there was also a case where Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish, and that also happened in the region of Bethsaida. 그러나 앞을 볼수 없는 이 맹인에게는 아무 도움이 되지 않는 겁니다. And yet all these things that had happened for this blind man was of no help whatsoever. 이때 어, 이 맹인이 이름도 나와 있지 않습니다. 얼마나 힘들겠어 안 보이는데 그리스도께서 베스데 도착했다는 시각을 맞춰서 거기 와서 어, 무릎을 꿇은 겁니다. And we see that in this passage, the name of this blind man is not even recorded. He hears the news that Jesus is coming to this village of Bethsaida, and though as difficult as it must have been for him, he makes his way to him to ask him to help him. 어, 중요한 것은 나는 볼수 없는 사람이다 라고 포기한 게 아니에요. 그리스도께서 오시는 그 시간은 맞아요. 얼마나 힘든 일입니까? 사실 크게 나타난 겁니다. What's important is that he did not give up simply by the fact that he was blind and nobody could help him. How difficult must it have been for him to make that time to go and meet with Jesus exactly when he was arriving to that village? 오늘 혹시 병든 분들 오늘 중요한 답을 찾는 날이 되길 바랍니다. May all of those who are sick, who are ill, discover a very important answer today. 아, 내가 이게 또 문제 있다. If you are faced with an important problem, may this be the day in which you discover a very important answer to that problem. In the most critical moment, we see that nothing of the world can become an answer for you. Joseph was sold as a slave and there was nobody who could support him or help him. 그 무슨 그 무시무시한 그 누명을 쓰고 감옥에 들어간 겁니다. As you know very well, he was accused, falsely accused on very frightening charges and he was imprisoned. 그 누구도 요셉을 도울 수 없어요. And there was no one who could help Joseph. 요셉이 그걸 잘 알았는 겁니다. And Joseph knew that all too well. 나는 지금 이런 큰 어려움 속에 지금 감옥에 들어왔지만 은 나를 도울 수 있는 사람은 없다 하는 걸 알았는 겁니다. He realized that though I'm imprisoned right now on these charges, there is nobody who can come to help me. That's very important. It may become a reason for dismay, but at the same time, it is not. You can make that into the best time schedule of all. When 
when you are faced with a difficulty that is impossible, that you cannot do anything to try to address, it can become a reason for your dismay. 그러나 생에 정말 가장 가치 있는 거 찾아낼 수 있습니다. But it can also become the most important time in which you discover what is most precious in your lives. 예, 많은 사람들이 알지 못하고 있다가 에, 마지막에 큰 어려움 속에 죽어가죠. 여러분 이거 찾는 시간이 되어야 돼요. There are too many people who don't realize this and instead they face tremendous suffering at the end of their lives. You must discover this today. 네, 최고 응답을 누린 다윗도 마찬가지잖아요. 도울 자가 없어요. It was the same for, for David who was able to enjoy the greatest answer of all. There was nobody who could help him. 네, 그걸 빨리 캐치해야 됩니다. 도움이 될 수가 없어요. You must realize that quickly nothing can be of help to you. 에, 미국에 알렉산더 로이드라는 사람이 있습니다. There is a person by the name of Alexander Lloyd in America. 자, 이분이 에, 목사입니다. And this person is a pastor. 그런데 목회를 할수 없어요. But Reverend Lloyd could not carry out his ministry. 자, 부인이 어, 우울증이 걸려가지고 심심하면 화를 내는 거예요. His wife was diagnosed with depression and she would continue to rise up in anger. She would scream out and shriek. And at times she would even have some sort of epileptic seizure. Constantly, all the time. And then she would continue to go up, have her ups and downs. She would get better and then again she would fall back into that kind of difficulty. Then how can he carry out his pastoral ministry? 그리고 여자가 이제 막그 우울증이 심해져가 발작을 하면은 항상 하는 말이 당신 때문에 그렇다. And whenever her depression surged up and she began to have these seizures, she would continue to accuse him that this is all his fault. 근데 이, 이, 이 목사가 할 말이 없는 거예요. 왜냐 같이 살고 있는 게 맞으니까. And this pastor had nothing to say in response because it's true that they were living together. 이 병이요, 심각합니다. And this disease is a severe one. 아무리 그 좋은 데를 찾아가도 해결이 안 되는 거예요. No matter how many good clinics they went to visit, it would not, it could not be resolved. 뭐 조금 이제 안정됐다가 또 그랬다가 안정도 그래 계속 되는데 그러면서 아이를 두 명이나 낳았어요. And so her condition would stabilize, but again she would surge up again with that kind of uh, seizure and depression, and it continued to repeat that pattern. And then in the course of that, they had two children. 애들이 좀 크니까. 얘들도 불안한 거예요 엄마 때문에. And then when their children were growing up, because of their mother, they also were very insecure. 그 말이 아니지 집안이 지옥이야 지옥. 뭐너 발작하고 말해 말해 심지어는 자기 몸을 막 자해하는. And simply put, it was their home was just like hell on earth because whenever she her depression got the best of her, she would even try to take her own life. 막 피가 흐를 정도로 이렇게. To the point where she would cut herself and she would be bleeding. 이 목사님이. 안 해본 게 없는 거예요. 막 심리학자 찾아가고 막 이런 거 아무 어떻게 해도 안 되는 거예요. There was nothing this pastor did in attempt. They went to see psychologists, to psychiatrists. They did everything they could. 이 목사가 처음으로 하나님께 정말 기도를 시작해. For the very first time, this pastor began to genuinely pray before God. 실제 있는 일입니다. This actually happened. 그런데 이분에게 하나님과 큰 은혜가 있는. And a tremendous grace of God came upon him. And he began to share the answers he had received with his wife. And this kind of impossible healing took place for her. And if you look at their biographical accounts, uh, after she began to share this, these answers with her, she had one other seizure. But after that, for eight years, it all came to a stop. And because there are so many people suffering uh, from depression, this pastor and his wife began to go around to meet with those people to help them and for them to receive healing. And they began to share exactly what they themselves had experienced, and great works of healing arose for people. 그런 사람 많지 않습니까? 그 날이 갈수록 앞으로 많아지거든요. 그런 사람들이 막 어떨 때는 막 
There are a lot of people like that, and as days go by, the numbers will only increase. Those are the people who are behind a lot of these mishaps and incidents, a lot of murder cases as well. And because there are so many people who are in dire need of this kind of healing, they actually raised up um, these kinds of healing centers in all, sta- all the 50 states of the United States. And they even took their ministry internationally because there are so many people who are suffering these kinds of ailments. They established these centers in 90 countries. And because it, because it wasn't enough with just two of them, the pastor and his wife, they employed 200 of these coaches who could support this ministry. And I never had the opportunity to meet with uh, Reverend Alexander Lloyd, but I read about him in a book. Faith is such a simple matter, and we see that the things that he's doing, it's not wrong. Healing can arise through that kind of ministry. This is what he finally discovered after so many attempts and so many, so much effort at, at trying to resolve the dire straits that he and his wife were experiencing. And I think that it's something that the three organizations made, but there is a medical device that helps you to take stock of how much stress you're receiving in your physical body. And then pray just a little bit to see what happens, and you can actually see the numbers decrease. And then try this and try to restore your gratitude and thanksgiving and see what happens. And again, the numbers in that stress meter begin to fall. It's nothing at all, but because now they can visibly see with their eyes, it actually has an effect on these people. In just 50 or 60 days, they began to see the effects of that. And with that, this person continues to emphasize prayer. Now, because they see the numbers themselves, they can believe and have faith in prayer. If you truly believe this without seeing, you don't need that kind of device. Today, if you believe and pray, this time of worship becomes an amazing time for you. In other words, we are completely filled to the brim with all the incorrect things, rubbish, things that Satan brings to us. All sorts of misunderstandings and scars and all of our wrong experiences are all filling us. And there isn't one sole person who is responsible for all the wrong things that are inside of us. It's what we've been taught at school, what we read through books, what we've experienced ourselves. It's all the wrong things. The bigger problem is the force of darkness that Satan brings to us that we are completely oblivious about, but we are completely filled to the brim with those things. And it's exactly these things that this pastor happened to show these people. And when people actually saw a visual representation of that, they realized that's in fact true. After realizing that, they just prayed for a few days, and with that, actually the works began to arise. It's a very simple matter if you think about it. But I experienced this myself. I've really delved into this matter for the past 40 years. Why? Because you go into the evangelist field and there are so many people who are sick. How can we help these people? You look in the Bible and those people received healing. I myself have never fallen sick. 
거예요, But my greatest illness of all was my powerlessness. And that's not your small problem. I need to go out and save unbelievers, and yet I am less capable than even the unbeliever. 없다니까, I need to save my neighbors, and yet I'm even more powerless than my neighbors. 아, I go and run errands in the church, but I can't carry out that kind of work. One day, in a very simple way, I discovered this. It's so simple. I discovered that I don't have the things of God inside of me. The things of God need to come upon me through the power of the gospel, but that's exactly what I lacked. I never confessed this before people, but in fact, I was filled abundantly so with the wrong things, my things, the incorrect things, the falsehoods, all of my wrong experiences, all my avarice. Then of course the works cannot arise. And I served as an assistant pastor, but I carried out my ministry in a very strange way. The kind of mentality that I had was, if I do this well, I'm sure that this will become very profitable for me. But if you proceed that way, there's no alternative, there's no countermeasure against that kind of thinking. So my entire standard light upon people. If I do this, then my employers, the elders, all the people around me will look favorably, favorably upon me. That was my standard. And how shameful was it? I thought to myself, because a person like you is teaching these children, how can these children see any change? I discovered that I completely lack the things of God inside of me. Really. That's the only thing that I realized. The people of God come to church. How can I try to help them with my things or the things of the world, and yet I lack the things of God inside of me? That was, and that was in fact true. I just realized that a very simple matter and I began to pray before God. After realizing that, all I did was pray. And that was approximately 35 years ago. And every morning, in the early morning, because nobody could disturb me at that time, after early morning worship, I prayed by myself. God, grant me the power of the gospel. Give me your power, Lord. Because only with that can I serve the believers and can I serve my church. With other things, how can I begin to serve the church? My surroundings, my environment, there was nothing there that could help me. I prayed honestly before God. God, send me to a church where I can carry out this work well. I prayed for about 40 days and I came to realize this thinking in my heart, your thinking is wrong. 그렇습니다. That's right. 깨달았어요. I realized that. 하나님, 좋은데 말고 내가 여기서 하나님이 원하시는 건 뭡니까? God, I realized my error, my, my error and I thought to myself, Lord, don't send me to a good place. Help me to discover your will here in this place. 그때에 제 생에 평생을 누릴 만한 응답이 왔어요. And it was then that I received the greatest answer of my entire lifetime that I can enjoy all life long. 
교회 안에, 교회 안에 일어나고 이 허감을 막, 막아야 되는데 교역자들이 있다고 하면서 말이요 기도 운동, 전도 운동을 못 일으켜서 이 교회가 이 모양이 됐구나 말이요 I discovered that we need to block the forces of darkness that are trying to plow into the church. We have our ministers and pastors, and yet because they cannot carry out the prayer and evangelism movement, we cannot realize this inside of the church. And long-time believers, when the force of darkness began to sweep into the church, they were completely swept away by that. And at that time, I proposed this to my senior pastor. I said, Pastor, the church is a gathering of the people of God, and so there are a lot of good people here. In prayer, I will truly carry out the evangelism movement. If you approve of my plan to make an announcement at the church so that we can open an evangelism school so that all those who want to evangelize can gather together, that's what I will try to do. That was my sincere heart. And that became the initial start of the evangelism school to evangelize the entire world that's continuing even today. God completely transformed me as powerless as I was. I really was powerless. Those who knew me early on, they know my state of powerlessness. I, how can I begin to even speak about evangelism? Even the things that were around me were not taking place. But God changed me. It's not what I've done. I did not have the things of God inside of me. I was filled with the wrong things and the things of the world. But it's a simple matter. Today, the first point, this blind man who met with Jesus, who met with Jesus his spiritual DNA completely changed. That's the first point, and yes, it is possible. And we don't know how he made his way to Jesus, but it says in verse 22, he makes his way before Jesus and begs him to touch him. Simply put, do you think that he didn't attempt any other things? He probably tried everything he could, but he threw all that aside. 여러분, it is a most difficult thing for a blind man to make his way to Jesus. And if you see in verse 23, it says that he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And it says that he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him. Jesus asks, do you see anything? And he responds, I see people, but they look like trees walking. And in verse 25, it reads that Jesus again laid his hands on his eyes. It's the same principle. When we are imprinted with the power of God, that's when we are completely transformed. Though this man was visually impaired, he believed that if he made his way before Jesus, he would be able to open his eyes and regain his sight. He believed that if Jesus touches him, that he could be healed. He had clear conviction of that. That is what we refer to as a CVDIP. You need to possess that. And this is what we call that picture, of the image of answer. Begin this starting today. Discard all that rubbish that you filled yourself with, all the wrong things. Discard all of that and get rid of it and instead fill yourself with this and have that spiritual image in your mind. 
and pray. And in verse 26, he is healed, and we see Jesus sends him not back to the village, but he returns him back to his home. What does that mean? Don't listen to the words of other people so that you can be completely imprinted with the mystery of the throne. You need to experience this. Isn't that so? If you experience God completely getting rid of all the rubbish inside of your physical body, inside of your hearts and your minds, then you'll be completely transformed as a result. For many, this is difficult, but for you, it is possible if you believe this and if you pray. We see that there are people with depression. Nobody could heal them. And yet this pastor, all he did was he attempted what he himself had experienced and they began to be healed. It doesn't just end there. What is the second point? The disciples who witnessed this now began to completely save the field of Israel. A representative example of this is Acts 3. This is not the Peter that we know. He sees a man, a crippled man from birth, sitting before the temple gates. It says that it's a third hour of prayer. He constantly had seen this crippled man whenever he went to pray. You need to understand this very well. It's the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Whenever he went to pray, he saw this crippled man. And then a short time schedule came. This is what Peter says. It says uh, that Peter, together with John, that they looked intently at the man. In Greek, anoetos, it means that he directed his gaze at him and looked intently at him. And then he says, It says, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this word was completely conveyed inside of the physical body, the soul and spirit, and the mind of this crippled man. And this works arose that the people of the world could not understand or even fathom. And a few days ago, I happened to see a, a video clip that somebody had sent to me. And this person just went and looked at the city of Tokyo and in just a few minutes would come back and completely draw it. Exactly. He, this person is a genius, is he not? And all the cars that had passed by, he even recorded all the license plate numbers. He just saw it once. How is this even possible? So when she was young, she just happened to sit at the piano once, but at the age of 12, again, tried to play the piano and became a world-renowned pianist. This person, again, another person, nine years old, and they began when they were nine, and they are now crafting these world-class pieces. And so I was looking at the commonality between these people that was introduced in this media clip, and it said they had Asperger syndrome. They, they were autistic. And I found that very understandable. Do you know why? Everyone, everyone, 
because they are completely cut off from all people and all of society. So they can only focus on one thing. And with that, the tremendous power of God comes upon us and we are able to utilize that to our advantage. So now change that just a little bit and adjust it to your needs. This doesn't mean that we will look down on or ignore the things of the world or other people, but if we were to focus not on those things, but only on the power of God, what kind of things would arise for us? And so this is all science. It's a spiritual science. And what Reverend Alexander Lloyd did, it was very scientific. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And even that is scientific. Does that mean that we will never die, that we will live forever? That's not what I'm trying to emphasize. Whether we live or die, however, we must do so with the power of God. And it goes beyond that. We see that this same power of God is now manifested upon the church officers. Simply put, it's conveyed to our elders, simply put. These elders are the people who are inside of the field. And here, astounding works arise. What is that? Samaria. Samaria. A church officer by the name of Philip went to Samaria and there are people with epileptic seizures, people who are demon-possessed. And you see a very important word recorded here. It says with one heart, Philip continued to speak to them and Philip listened to, intently to their words. And from here, the works arose. It says that Peter fixed his attention on this crippled man, and that's when the works arose. People, even their own school teachers, looked down on them because they were autistic, and yet the student continued to fix their attention on one thing. And the works arose. You must realize that we store inside of us the tremendous power of God that He has given to us. You need to know what prayer is. If the remnants don't know what the gospel is or what prayer is, how can they survive in the world? You need to know what the gospel is. You need to know what prayer is in order for you to conquer everything in the world. Let's say that without this power, our young adults go out and carry out their business and their work inside of society. To some extent, you can carry out your work by your abilities, but one day you will face your own limitation. Then you cannot save the people in the field. Today, you must firmly hold on to this covenant. You meet with Jesus Christ. It's not unconditionally. By the very important condition of God, you are transformed. Today, by your faith and by your prayers, you can change your spiritual DNA. Today, inside of prayer, you can change all the rubbish inside of your physical bodies, in your souls and spirits, in your mind, into the power of God. And only when that changes can the works arise. I will come to the conclusion. What kind of church does God need? A church that carries out the Bethsaida movement. And if that's carried out, the answers will naturally come. And simply put, just by you, that by the sheer fact that you attend that kind of church, the answers will come. If you happen to inadvertently help a murderer or a thief or a burglar, just by that fact alone, just by that association, you'll be cursed. 
위기 속에 사람 살린 사람에게 물한 그릇 줬다. 그것도 축복이 돼요. 그렇잖아요. But if you were just to give a glass of water to somebody who is helping others in need and inside of crisis, even that can become a blessing. 2, 3, 7 나라 사람들이 우리 교회 와서 치유받아야 돼요. Then how much more so this? The two, three, seven nations, the people of those nations must come to our church. And we must help them have the change, change all the things that they have into the things of God. Otherwise, it's never going to work. You need to help them to change the things inside of them into the things of God. No one recognized her for it inside of our church, but this one deaconess, she went out and she evangelized to foreigners no every day. No one told her to do so, but every single day, just like it came out in the, in the message, she would lead the Tarakbang meetings with them every day. And then on her way back after evangelizing, she happened to try to return home and she got into a car accident and died. And nobody thought such a, of the, such a big ordeal or such a big deal because even in our church, she wasn't somebody who stood out. 그분의 메시지를 듣고 복음을 듣고 외국인이 바뀌는 거예요. But foreigners listened to her message and they began to change. 지적 같은 일이죠. It's a miracle, is it not? 완전 모슬림 근의 지도자 집안인데 그리스도 얘기 듣고요 바뀌는 거예요. And he was, this foreigner was from a completely Islamic nation in a leading family, a prominent family living in that country. And he was completely transformed to the message of Christ. He quit his job, went to seminary school, and he became a pastor. He's Reverend Salam. I spoke of him before as well. And Pastor Ronnie underneath him, we see that these people are faced with a threat of death and none of them are shaken. The Muslims there in that community, they falsely accused him and imprisoned him and yet he sent me a message of condolence. Comforting me, saying, Pastor, don't worry about us. We're fine. Though I'm in prison, I'm all right. My country needs Christ, and so I am all right. And even during my entire lifetime, it's the very first time I've heard anybody who was in that kind of utter difficulty confessing those kinds of words. People, just because they're slightly offended, leave the church. There are even some people who change their religion and convert because they're a little bit peeved. I've seen all too many people like that. But Reverend Salam, he's falsely accused, he's incarcerated in prison, and the government is telling him, if you say you're not going to believe in Jesus, we'll let you free. But instead, he comforted me, saying, Pastor, don't worry about anything. It's not me that's important. My country needs Jesus Christ. Absolutely, the works will take place upon that. And so... He's told me, he told me not to worry. What kind of churches needed a church that completely brings spiritual healing? We need that kind of system. Remnants cannot go out into the world unprepared. They must have this transformation take place and then go out. With what? They must be changed with the things of God, with the power of the throne. Those are the things that belong to the remnants in the first place. With that in hand, they must go out into the world. May you pray this prayer today. And those who are sick, don't worry about anything. Lay your hands on yourself. You can be sick. So really pray about that. 
세상적인 거, 틀린 거. 하나님이 바꾸어 주옵소서. God, may you completely change all the wrong things, all the worldly things that are inside of me. It's simple. May the spirit of triune God fill my spirit. May the blessing of the throne come upon me. Only then can I save my family, the field, and so many multitudes of people who are experiencing difficulties. We have not prayed that prayer until now. But if you pray that prayer, the works will arise. All of our believers throughout the nation and the world do not fall into your own dismay. This must become the time schedule for you to discover this and transform yourself. Let us pray. God, we thank you. May this be a time in which we completely change all the wrong things that continue to overturn us and overturn the people of the world. May it be a time in which we change all the bad things that bring illness unto us. May it be a time for us to be imprinted with the things of God. And by this prayer, may we stand as witnesses who save the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.